Um, I'm going to share some things with you that um, I believe the Lord has shared with me, um, especially Monday morning when I was up here before the Lord. He opened some things up to me in a way I'd never thought about. And so what we're going to do is talk about God's kingdom in prayer. And there is a close correlation between the kingdom of God and prayer. And I'd never thought of it uh, in, this, in this way before. And so I'm looking forward to this because I know I'm going to learn some things as we go along as well. But in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 9 through 13... Yeah, this is my paraphrase of what's commonly called the Lord's Prayer, okay? But it's actually not the Lord's Prayer, it's principles of prayer, all right? And so in Matthew 6, beginning with verse 9, when asked how they should pray, Jesus said, you should pray in this manner. Our Father who is in heaven, sacred is your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us the bread we need for today and forgive us our debts in the manner that we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen. You know, to many people, prayer has become a source of frustration because the prayers prayed haven't been answered, whether by them or whether by others whom they've requested to pray, okay? God generally gets the blame for unanswered prayers, doesn't he? Amazing. But prayer is a legal matter. Therefore, it must follow God's protocol. And we're going to just closely scrutinize the scriptures so we can learn God's protocol and become more effective in our praying. And I've been surprised at some things as I've been studying, and, and you're probably going to say, I don't believe that. <laughs> well, that's all right. You can say it, but check me out and change your believing. How's that? You just go by the scriptures. Prayer is not a formula. And, and in, in this society today, it's, uh, it's really amazing how, how people think about prayer. You know, I've been to uh, events or right before an event, a person come up to me and say, I hate to give you such short notice, but would you pray? Like, um, and, and I can appreciate that to a degree, okay? But I also understand that most of the time what they're saying is I know you probably need a day or two to figure this out and write it out and all this type stuff. Because I've seen it. I've seen it time and time again. But this, we're not talking about a formula. We're not talking about some oratory uh, speech we're given as a prayer. But we're talking about going to God in such a way that God can actually answer that, that request. Okay? And so, prayer is a legal matter, or matter, I should say. Prayer is a legal matter. Consequently, it must be done in a way that does not violate kingdom principles. That's why we're talking about God's kingdom and prayer. Many prayers violate kingdom principles. That's why they're not answered. Our prayers must be governed by God, not by emotions, not by people, not by circumstances. But our prayers should be governed by God. Now I understand that there are different types of prayers listed in the scriptures. But we're not going to focus on all the different types of prayers. We're going to look specifically at the prayer petition. Because this seems to be the type of prayer that tends to disappoint a lot of people. <coughs> Excuse me. Because 
They're not seeing the results they're wanting to see. Now I want you to listen to this statement and hear it well. Because I think we've all been guilty of violating. There is a time to pray. There is a time to say. Don't ever get the two confused. And I believe so often people get them confused. Praying is making a petition to God. Saying is giving a command to the opposing force. Do you follow what I'm saying? Whether it's a sickness, whether it's a demon, whatever the case may be. Jesus said, speak to the mountain. He didn't say pray about the mountain. You with me? The praying would be making a petition. He's not saying to make a petition that the mountain be moved. He's saying to give a command. You follow me? Okay. So it's imperative to know when to request and when to command. When Jesus ministered to people while living here on earth, he did not pray for them. You heard that, didn't you? He exercised authority over the opposing force. Now, I want you to really think about this because... I, I think there's been so much violation in, in prayer that, that we just think that God's mad at us uh, because we're not seeing answered prayers. It's not that way at all. It's legal. The people who came to Jesus did not request Jesus to pray for them. As a matter of fact, if you'll check it out, they sought to touch him, just touch him, or for him to touch them. Now that's faith. Let me touch you and my need will be met. Or you touch me and my need will be met. It didn't say a thing about praying. You with me? Now there's a time to pray. So don't, don't lose me on this, okay? Matthew 19, 13 gives the only account of Jesus being asked to pray for someone and if you look at this, you'll find that he was asked to lay his hands on small children and pray for them. And then if you look at Mark 10, 16, from his account, it appears that the request was to lay hands on the children and pray a blessing over them. Invoke a blessing over the children. Not praying for them to be healed or this type thing. Okay? So... What I want us to do as we go along is uh, look at what we call the model prayer given by Jesus. And I believe we can gain great insight into successfully petitioning God in the model prayers, what we read at the beginning. Now, <clears throat> the way that prayer begins, and most of you have probably said it more times than you can count. Um, you know, if you played any kind of sports, I mean, that was just the thing back then. You gathered in a circle and played the, prayed the Lord's Prayer. And nobody knew what they were saying. <laughs> you understand? We were just praying, okay? But Jesus was asked to teach how to pray. Disciples asked him to teach us how to pray as John's disciples told him. Teach us. So he responded by teaching a model, an example, principles, not just something to be quoted. You with me? All right. So he began by placing the attention on Father God. Our Father, now if, if you really listen to this, Jesus is trying to get the people's attention, those who believe on him, to understand that they share the same Father. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm talking about Jesus and you or me, we share the same Father. And the Father that we share resides in heaven. Not here on earth. Where's his throne? That's what I'm, I'm talking about, okay? 
Our Father who is in heaven. In other words, Father who's not governed by earth. You with me? And we're going to get into something with that in a minute. All right? Sacred is your name. Your name's sacred. Your name's hallowed. Your name's holy. So what we're doing is getting, it's getting us in an attitude. A realization of who we're actually petitioning. And I think a lot of people just haphazardly go to God, not realizing who they're really talking to. If they realized who they were talking to, I suspect a lot of the conversation would change with much more respect. Not shaking your fist in the face of God and accusing God and all these type things. So, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Now that's interesting to me. Your kingdom come. Look at uh, Luke chapter 4. I'm already there. All I have to do is look at it, right? Uh, And beginning with uh, verse 5. This is where Jesus, after his water baptism, has been led by the Spirit into the wilderness for the purpose of being tempted by the devil. And this second temptation, or this temptation that Luke lists uh, secondly, (coughs) says in verse 5, And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this power I will give you and the glory that goes with it. Actually, the word power there should be translated authority. All the authority of these kingdoms and the glory that goes with that authority, I will give to you because that's been delivered to me. And I can give it to anyone I want to. Now I want us to just stop right here a minute. God created heaven and earth. And God created humanity. And God created humanity and gave humanity dominion. You understand? Adam and his wife had dominion on earth. But because they yielded to the temptation of Satan, they yielded their dominion to him. You with me? See, when they fell, God didn't take the dominion back. That's not the way God operates. He didn't say, well, uh, you know, now that he's messed up, I'm going to just take, take back over. No. No. Once he gave the dominion, the dominion was given. And so from that time forward, man has had dominion over the earth. And I'm talking about the the, the kingdoms of the world. Okay? People blame God for the mess we're in. But God had nothing to do with the mess we're in. God tried to tell man what to do to prevent him from getting into the mess. And man wouldn't listen. So consequently, the dominion that's operating in earth today is not God's. <coughs> Even in the church. And I'm not talking about the true body of Christ. I'm talking about the system. The religious system is the kingdom of the world. God did not design the religious system. Men did. (coughs) Just bear with me. We get over this. So I'm, I'm wanting you to see that there was a reason for Jesus saying pray for God's kingdom to come. You with me? Yeah. For God to rule... In earth. 
He didn't say pray that God would overthrow. You follow me? But that God's kingdom would come to earth. Why? So the will of God could be done in earth. <laughs> because the kingdom of the world is not doing the will of God. It's not capable of doing the will of God. It doesn't know how God thinks and how God acts. And so God's kingdom needs to operate in earth so the kingdoms of the world don't ultimately destroy it. Now I know God's word's coming to pass, but just stay with me, okay? In Noah's day, it got so bad that God destroyed all but eight people. Kept a remnant. Now the interesting thing is, that remnant had dominion. That remnant saw what happened to the people who didn't listen to God's instructions. And what, where it got them. But yet, that's the remnant that replenished the earth. And through that remnant, the perversity that you see today came. Amazing, isn't it? God selected a nation. Actually, it started with a man, Abraham. A man that followed God. A man that believed in God. A man that produced. Ultimately, the nation of Israel. But look at the nation of Israel. God selected them out of a heathen nation, Egypt. Worshiping other gods. Once he got them out of the environment, then God gave them a constitution to run the nation. That if they would follow that constitution, they would be different than any other nation on the earth. And they would always be the head, not the tail. The above, not the beneath. <coughs> and to help, excuse me, to help them, he had this written out. You understand? The foundation of it is what we call the Ten Commandments. Which actually is it, summed up, and Jesus did this himself. He summed it up in the New Testament when asked what the greatest commandment was. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you do these two things, all the other commandments are fulfilled. Right? Love God. In John's writing, John said it this way. My, my paraphrase, but understand it. If you don't love your neighbor, you don't love God. How can you say you love God when you don't love your brother? As a matter of fact, it goes on to say they're lying. You with me? So then, God's kingdom is dominated by love. We thought it was force. <laughs> but even under the old covenant, it's dominated by love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Don't get your mind on other things. You, you enter into such a love relationship with the Lord that will keep you above the world. To where you're not enticed with the things of the world. Your kingdom come. This kingdom that's operating now is self-destructing. Your kingdom come so that your will can be done on this earth. You understand that the only way God's will can be done on earth is if the body of Christ submit themselves to the kingdom of God. 
That's the only way it's going to be done. Heathen are not going to do the will of God. You understand? They're not interested in what God wants. They're interested in what they want. Sadly, the religious arena is not interested in what God wants. The religious arena is interested in what it wants. Then it was religion that crucified the Son of God, or had Him crucified, wasn't it? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, just like it is in heaven. We want earth operating like heaven. That's what Jesus was saying. Understand who Father God is. Understand his kingdom is different than the kingdoms of the world. Get focused on his kingdom and his will so that his will will be done or executed in earth. Just like it's executed in heaven. Then he said, we want to be people who live by faith. (laughs) You didn't get that when you said the Lord's Prayer, did you? Give us today our daily bread. Now, we have an example of that in the Old Testament with the manna. What were they to do? Go out and gather it how often? Daily. As a matter of fact, in Deuteronomy, Jesus was just quoting to the devil from Deuteronomy when he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God said, go out each day. But some of them had a better idea. They don't want to do it every day. We'll just get up enough to last until tomorrow and it bred worms. Until the sixth day, God said, get twice as much. And here again, they said, no, it won't work because we've already tried this and it bred worms. So they go out the seventh day and it's not there. Not living by the word of God. You understand? And God is wanting us to live by his word. Not by some religious doctrine. Not by some creed. But by the word of God. Daily. Feeding on the word of God Every day. Daily bread. And then we're not wanting to go into the path of temptation, but we're wanting you to deliver us from evil. So here's the way it's done. Focus on God in his kingdom. Stay focused on God in his kingdom. Stay focused on God in his kingdom. The temptation comes when you're focused on another kingdom. Don't lead me in the ways of the world. You understand? Paul writing, I think it's 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he talks about there's no temptation taken you but such as common to man. But God is faithful. Who will with the temptation will make a way of escape. In other words, if you'll stay focused on the Lord right during that, while that temptation is going on, God's going to show you how to get out of it. There's a way to get out of it. It'll be called God's way, the kingdom of God, the principles of God. Okay? Yours is the kingdom. It's amazing that we'll quote it, but people are trying to build their own kingdoms. Yours is the power, but people want to talk about their power, their authority, what they can do. Yours is the glory, but yet people are trying to take the glory. Look what I did. Sort of like Nebuchadnezzar, this is the Bible and I built. Well, read that for an example. See what that got him. Nothing good can come out of that, can it? Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory, and it's going to be forever, so be it. And we need to get that established on the inside of of us. All these things that I've mentioned are principles. They're principles. He's not saying just say the prayer. 
He's saying when you make a petition to the Father, follow the principles. First off, place your attention on Father God. Then he emphasized the governing power of God. Get your attention on that. Then he gave the revelation that earth to operate like heaven. It's amazing how many people, and I'm talking about Christians, have prayed for all these years just to hold on to get out. Not, not looking to make a change in earth. I heard so many testimonies growing up as a kid that you can't count. Just pray till I'll hold on. I can't wait for the Lord to get me out of here. I wish the Lord would come tonight in all this. Insensitive to the feelings of anyone else. That's a self-centered statement. I'm only interested in me and everybody else can go to hell. That's just, that's the essence of the statement like that. That's not how Jesus told us to pray. A day at a time. Live by faith. The just live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. All these things that, that, that relate to faith. Then our attention is placed on God leading us and delivering us. God leading us and delivering us. The psalmist said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not that we never go through things. But if we keep focused on him, don't turn him loose. Don't turn him loose. Because it will be so dark you can't see. I, I know when I, I went through survival training and all before going to Vietnam. We were on the, what they call the force march and all this and uh, you know, the enemies out there with booby traps and all this type stuff. And you're in pitch black. It, it's so dark, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. So you held on to the man in front of you. You grabbed his, the backpack. Don't turn it loose. If you turn it loose, you're going to lose your way. It's dark. And this is what he's telling us. Don't turn loose of the Lord. You may not be able to see what's going on. You may not be able, be able to understand what's going on. But this is where there has to be a complete trust in the Lord that the Father will lead me through this. Yeah. Principle. God knows where He's taking us. We just take the journey a day at a time. Step at a time. And then understand the magnitude of God, not that we can fully comprehend. But understand that there is no one to compare to God. Certainly not humanity. Isn't it amazing how the one who created a human being, the human being thinks he's smarter than the one that created him. Or... Realizing that we were created by God, and yet we want to make an image and say that's our God. Just like Israel delivered supernaturally by God, here, here's God leading them in a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day, and they want to make a golden calf. That's the God that brought us out of Egypt. That's what they were saying. Such a deception. Why? Because their eyes are horizontal, not vertical. They're not looking up. They're not listening to God. They're not focused on the Lord. And in this model prayer are vital principles that will assist us in our petitioning God. So he wants us to learn these principles. <coughs> Actually, you know, if you think about it, uh, the religious people that, that were in control when Jesus came to earth, they were the ones teaching you how to get to God, right? 
They were the ones looking for the Messiah. But here Jesus, the Messiah, is, you know, standing there looking, looking them face to face. And there, in the 8th chapter of John, they're having a confrontation with him. And they're telling him who they are. He's telling them that, that you know, they could be liberated. You know. If you, you, you know the Son. It's the Son that sets you free. You believe in Him. Oh, Abraham's our father. Religion's our father. We're set by denomination. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Methodist. I'm a Presbyterian. I'm a Pentecostal. I'm this. I'm that. That's my father. Don't even know what we're saying. Jesus said, I'm going to tell you who your father is. The devil. And his works you will do. Abraham, you say, is your father. But Abraham didn't treat me like you're treating me. That'll identify our father. Okay? So it's, you have to get your eyes off of the religious arena and quit, quit looking at the religious traditions and let that formulate a mindset in you on what the proper prayer is and how to petition God. Go to the Word of God. Now what we're going to do, and I'm not going to get to it this morning, is I'm going to take you through all the prayers Jesus prayed in the Bible. And you're going to, you'll be surprised, really. But in John 16, verses 23 through 27, we learn that our access to Father... God is Jesus. Up until now, you've not asked anything. You've always come to me is the essence of it. But you haven't asked the Father for anything. From now on, I'm telling you, go to the Father, but you have to go in my name. You have to go in my name. You don't get audience with God, the Father, without going through the Son the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the only way to the Father. See, he was talking about the Father. Philip said, show us the Father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I'm the way to the Father. So the name of Jesus gives the believer the privilege and authority of petitioning Father God. Notice I said privilege, number one. But then we're authorized. Do you understand? But think about this. Although we have authorization to petition Father God, do you know your petition must agree with your authority? It can't be independent of Jesus. So you ask yourself, would Jesus pray what I'm about to pray? Or would Jesus pray what I've been praying? And the only way to find that out is go follow the pattern of Jesus, his life, his ministry. And find out if Jesus prayed like you're praying. If not, then stop praying that way. Because you're just wasting your time. And it'll get you frustrated. We're not to abuse the authority that's been given unto us. Misuse, actually, of this authority is going to produce undesirable results. God just saved the world. It's an illegal prayer. Legally, the provision for the salvation of the world is there. But scripturally, we know that everybody won't accept. There's only one way to be saved, that's Jesus. So one that won't accept Jesus cannot be saved. And I put emphasis on cannot. Because in this day and age, people are, are deceiving people into thinking that you, you can get the Father God bypassing Jesus. That's a deception. 
That won't happen in a million years. You understand? So, if we'll look at Jesus' earthly prayer life, which we're going to do, I believe it will assist us in making petitions that God can legally grant. A lot of what we're praying, we should be saying. Not praying. But in order to say it with conviction, we're going to have to get some things settled on the inside of us first. You with me? I'll just mention this, just jump ahead, but I, I, I'll give an example and we'll talk about this later. Jesus didn't go to the tomb and pray for Lazarus. As a matter of fact, the prayer he prayed, he said, Father, I'm just saying this for the benefit of the people. You always hear me. When Peter asked to raise Dorcas from the dead to come there, Peter goes in where Dorcas is lying and he turns from the body and goes over here and prays first. Once he prayed, once he got his direction, he didn't pray for Dorcas, he commanded. You see the difference? There are too many people are praying when they should be saying Turn your back on the situation and the circumstance and get your face to God. And get your answer from God. Then command. You with me? So because our petitions are made through the authority of Jesus, we have to pray in the parameters of this delegated authority. You get outside the boundaries, he's not going to answer that. It's illegal. The works, the decisions of Jesus were always initiated by his Father God. They weren't initiated by desires, not circumstances. We have to follow this pattern. I'll go back to Lazarus, and here again, we're, we'll talk about it later on. But he waited two days before even leaving. And, and we're talking about a good friend. And see, and, and people think as soon as we hear the news, boom, we should jump and run to the situation. But if I understand it correctly, he was getting his direction before he left. And he already told his disciples, they're going to see the glory of God. You understand? He got his direction first, then he went. To the scene. You with me? Get your direction first. Not your direction from people. From circumstances. But from God. Amen? I'm going to stop there and then we'll, we'll probably pick back up on this this, this uh, evening as far as I know. Okay. Father, I thank you that you bless us indeed. You enlarge our territory. Your hands with us to keep us from evil so that we do not cause pain. And I thank you for blessing us and keeping us and for making your face to shine upon us and being gracious unto us. You lift up your countenance upon us and you give us peace. So, Lord, we're glad to invite you to rise up, to let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. Amen. Amen. Amen.